كيلوغرام ونصف من الدهون والماء وبضع من المواد الكيميائية هي السبب وراء كل الحروب كل الاختراعات التجارة والاقتصاد الحب والكراهية الإنجاز والفشل حول العالم وعبر الزمن إن كان كل ما نعرفه اليوم عن العالم نعرفه من خلال هذه الكتلة الدهنية اللزجة أو ليس جديرا بنا أن نعرف كيف تتعلم هي أولا Why do we even have a brain? Brains are really expensive organs. Your brain is your most expensive organ in your whole body. It's only three pounds, but it takes up 20% of your metabolic budget. When animals started to hunt each other, they needed to be able to move in more sophisticated ways. Indeed, you think of the track through which information becomes memory or knowledge. There are three major pathways. The first entry zone at the lowest end of the brain, almost above the spinal cord, is called the RAS, the Reticular Activating System. And that system is a filter. There's millions of bits of sensory information coming up from the nervous system, from the skin, from the touch, from the hearing, from the sound, from movement, pressure. All of those sensory, billions of bits, are reporting to this low brain all the time. What gets in? Obviously, it's not a conscious thing. We can't scan through millions of bits and say, I'll take that one. So the priority system in this low brain filter is what's new, what's different, what could hurt me, what could help me. It's very primitive. And only what gets accepted makes the cut to possibly go to the amygdala. تمر البيانات اولا في فلتر الدماغ السفلي حيث يبدو الامر كمنافسه شديده بين الشعور بالتهديد والحاجه الى التعلم على انتباه الدماغ وبالتاكيد سيختار الدماغ النجاة على ان ينمو ويتطور ان مرت البيانات من الفلتر الاول تنتقل بعدها الى الامجدلا لوزة صغيرة في عمق الدماغ مسؤولة بالأصل عن عواطفنا لكنها أيضاً تتصرف كبوابة للبيانات إما أن تفتح لها الطريق لتمر إلى الذاكرة وإما أن تصدها وتعيدها من حيث جاءت And if the amygdala is in the stress state because of fear, threat, anxiety or even boredom or frustration of not reaching a goal, then that also, that information then also doesn't make it to memory. It's also shunted to the low brain. Now, when input is shunted to the low brain, we become just like our other mammals in the wild. fight, flight, freeze. The low brain in humans is also there for survival. It's not there to create memories or reflect. It's there, fight, flight, freeze, survival. And in humans, like the students in the classroom, we'll see acting out and zoning out. When your brain controls your body, you can think of it as your brain is running a budget for your body. It's not budgeting money, it's budgeting glucose and salt and water and oxygen and all the resources that your body needs to stay alive and well. And so every time you move your body, every time you learn something new, this is an expense. You're spending resources. And you can think about when you sleep, when you eat, and so on. Um, these are deposits in your body budget. And So this, this transaction is happening all the time. Repeated failure to achieve a goal sets the amygdala up so when that is perceived as a task, it goes into the red zone, the block zone. In terms of boredom, again, not a few moments of boredom, but sustained or repeated boredom, like low relevance, low personal relevance, 
or because somebody already knows it and they're being asked to sit through that same meeting about uh, hostile work environments or adding fractions over and over and they know it, the amygdala builds into its red block zone. And if things are predictable, you know, because unpredictability is very expensive for a human brain. It means the brain can't do its job in an efficient way. Um, and it's um, much more expensive. And in general, humans don't like unpredictability. قدرتنا على التعلم إذا مرهونة بعواطفنا. لكن لحظة، أو ليس الدماغ هو الجزء العقلاني فينا؟ أو لسنا مخلوقات عقلانية؟ And what your brain receives. are the outputs of some changes in the world. These are the causes, your brain is receiving the effects. It doesn't know the causes, it only has access to the effects. So how does your brain know what to do next if it only receives the outcomes of a cause? It doesn't know what the actual causes are. And the answer is, it guesses. It guesses based on past experiences that are similar to the present. What your brain is doing is, is figuratively speaking, asking itself, the last time I was in a situation like this, where I heard and smelled and saw the things that I'm you know, experiencing, what did I do next? What did I feel next? What did I see next? That rationality is not the absence of feeling. And it's certainly not the absence of emotion. And sometimes emotions are sources of wisdom. And sometimes thoughts are really problematic.